Jonah chapter 2. Amen. Let's get up for the music music ministry on today. Y'all got kind of quiet. Is it? Are they been a blessing to you today? Come on, let's give it up for the music ministry. They tell me three's a charm, man. Let's give it up for the music ministry today. Amen. They talk about how great and how mighty our God is. Amen. And truly, he's a mighty God. Is a mighty God. Jonah chapter 2. Amen. Jonah chapter 2. Amen. And it's Amen. Jonah chapter 2. And when you get it, just if you do me a favor once you get it. Amen. I think y'all got it. Just turn to your neighbor. Just want to make sure your neighbor has it. Amen. Because, uh, amen. We got, we got time. So just check your neighbor. If you would, just do a little neighbor check. Make sure your neighbor has it. Amen. Amen. We got time. Whether we use your Bible or your iPhone, Android, whatever the Bible app that you brought. Um, whatever it is. As long as it's the Word. I ask that you would find it if you would. Because... I just want to make sure that if you happen to be in Cheddar's or in the waiting room at timeout, amen, Baker's line, getting your chicken, or wherever you're going to eat this afternoon, amen, I want you to be able to at least say, the preacher came from the book of Jonah, chapter 2, amen, y'all kind of quiet, amen, amen, all right, old grandma, you smile, man, Pearl, we go over her house, after Sunday service, my dad would take us by. And she was a member of a local church here in town, had a fantastic preacher. And uh, my dad would always say, well, how was church today? And she said, oh, he, the church show was great. And my, my dad would say, well, Pearl, what the preacher preach about? She said, I don't know, but he sure preached. <laughs> I don't want that indictment on Blessed Green. Amen. He sure preached. That's what, he, that's what she remembered. Uh, verse number 10. And the Lord commanded the fish and vomited Jonah onto dry land. You may be seated. And the Lord commanded the fish and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Father in heaven, we come once again to say thank you for the opportunity to be in worship one more time. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that has reigned in this place on today. Uh, now God is preaching time. I ask that you would allow your word to come forth with power, purpose, and passion. If there be any unchurched or unsaved in the building today, that through the preaching of the gospel, somebody might accept you as Lord and Savior. Have your way, Lord. I need your help today, Lord. I'm not feeling as, as good as I should, but Lord, I ask that you get us through this preaching moment, that your people will be blessed on today. In Jesus' name, I ask this prayer. Amen. 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 Need your prayers today um, as we get through the message on today. Um, we've kind of been in an uh, unofficial series, 30 for 30. And we know those that watch ESPN um, in the building, 30 for 30 is just a, a, a view of one's life who uh, might have went from rags to riches and sometimes they go from riches to rags. Amen. I think I got some viewers in here. Um, and so it's always interesting as we take a look at someone else's life and see all the mistakes they made. And, and to say, and oftentimes if I'm, I'm guilty, um, I've often even talked back to the TV and said, if I had all that money. Anybody ever talk back to the TV? I've talked to the TV and I've said, man, if I was in the NBA, I wouldn't have spent all my money on houses and cars. If I was a singer and I had a voice like an angel, I, I, I wouldn't have done all that dope and drugs. Y'all kind of quiet. I guess I'm the only one that's ever talked back to the TV when I didn't see myself in their shoes. 30 for 30 just gives a, back, a backdrop of what that individual went through. Uh, when they were in the mountaintop or in the valley. And so, you know, the Bible is so encouraging because 
Uh, oftentimes, I, I see some 30 for 30s even in the Bible. And today, let's look at somebody else 30 for 30, Jonah. And Jonah, the, the title of this would be, Jonah would say, God favored me. Amen. So 30 for 30, God favored me by Jonah. Amen. Y'all know the story. Y'all know the story. Uh, and I'm asking that you just give me a few minutes to, to relook at it just for a few moments because we already know what's going to happen. Jonah did not do what the Lord asked him to do. Jonah got in trouble. God got him out of trouble. That's the text. Turn to him and say, neighbor, God favored me. When we look at this time, we see the prophet Jonah. Chapter 1, as we take a look, if you don't mind, just in case. I want to take a few moments to give a little background, just in case I ever uh, speculate that somebody's here that may not know who Jonah is. Jonah was a prophet. In chapter 1, he was given a command to go to Nineveh. No doubt, church, this was a tough assignment. Because in chapter 1, verse number 2, um, God tells him to go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come before me. And Nineveh was a great city and oftentimes there's some things that come with being a great city there was some great sin in that city the Bible says there was some great wickedness in that city As a matter of fact they worshiped idol gods they did not believe in the one and only true and living God and most most of you know what happened to Jonah I ain't mad at Jonah Jonah had a tough assignment fact is that Jonah, um, and if you can relate to the text, just say amen or ouch. Right. Now, Jonah had an assignment from God, and Jonah did what a few of us have often done, told God, no, I ain't doing that. Uh -huh. Y'all kind of quiet. That's, that's what happened in the text. Essentially, he told God, no. Is that what it, it, it Yeah, he told him, in other words, I ain't going. I ain't going to them. Because the text says when he decided, when he got his arms on chapter 1, Jonah got into the boat and went the other direction. Amen. Matter of fact, he went in the opposite direction that God had called him to go. And like I said, I ain't mad at Jonah because I, I imagine there's two or three folks here like myself. That sometimes we went in the opposite direction where God has told us to go. But then as he got on the boat, this, this is how good God is when... He wants to use us how good he is. Sometimes he gets our attention. Because the Bible records on the boat when Jonah thought he was just, he was kind of hiding out on the boat, you know, just kind of uh, being sneaky, undercover, just kind of mixing in with the crowd. Y'all know, just kind of blending in with the crowd. Uh, thought he, they just think he was somebody else, another sailor. But God has a way, the text says, getting our attention. Y'all know the story. What happened? God sent a storm. He sent a storm for the battles of his life. And ultimately what happened was it shook up the people in the boat. And the boat began, people in the boat began to ask, you know, what have we done to God? That lets me know I don't have time to stop. But sometimes God has a way of getting our attention. And I don't want to scare nobody, but if you've ever been out of the will of God, God has a way of getting our attention. Sometimes he'll send financial strain if you ain't tired. All right. If you ain't living right, sometimes he might send sickness. All right. If you're cheating on your wife, sometimes he might. All right. God has a way of getting our attention. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what happened. Sailors got on board. Sailors, Dick Nelson. Sailors was like, man, but look, look, if it's your will, uh, Jonah said, uh, just throw me over and think everything would be all right. right. And to come to find out, the sailors had a conversation with God and said, God, if it's your will, um, uh, we're putting our hands off this. Uh, we're going to do as you as you please. We're going to throw this fool off the boat. Has anybody ever want to throw somebody off the boat before? Come on, don't look at me like that. Y'all got some family members? You just want to throw them off the boat? You ain't got nothing to do with their situation because of the hell they're putting you through. You just want to throw them off the boat. <laughs> it's in the text. It's in the text. I'm still in the text. That's just life. You want to throw some folks 
off the board. Good news is Lord gonna catch them in a few minutes. So if you throw them off, just throw them to the Lord. And so now Peter gone off the boat. And all of a sudden now we're gonna get up to the text. As Jonah goes off the boat, they throw him over. And now Jonah, how good God is. Even in our mess ups, God still catches us. Amen. For the Bible says that as they threw him over, somebody caught Jonah. Right. <laughs> yes. So don't worry, when you throw the family members off the boat, God's going to catch him. Right. He put him in fish. And I love that because uh, he caught him, he kept him safe. In the midst of his mess, God still kept him safe. For the Bible says he was alive in the fish. Yes, How was he alive? Because he's talking to God in the fish. Yes, and I love that because God has a way of speaking to you and me to get our attention. And not only did he speak uh, to, to Jonah, I believe he spoke to the fish. Right. He said, fish, I got somebody that ain't acting right. But I don't need you to kill him. I just need you to hold him for a few days. Y'all kind of quiet. And the fish did exactly what God had asked him to do. And I'm so glad that in the midst of such a dangerous situation, even, oh, let me see, he even put Daniel was in the lion's den. The Hebrew boys was in a fiery furnace. That tells me that God's got a track record of keeping his own. I'm trying to get to the text. But I want to help somebody today know that God has a way of speaking to the very thing that may be holding you down. God can speak to who he needs to speak to. But I want to take a survey in the house today. Has he ever spoken to your husband? Has he spoke to your wife? Has he spoke to your supervisor? Has he spoke to your family and friends? Has he spoke to your lawyer? Has he spoke to your banker? Y'all kind of quiet. I'm going to run, run the road one more time. Because I know there's at least some folks in the house today that has turned over somebody to God. I'll be the first to admit. I got some, I got some children in here that parents said, you know what? I know he's out of control, but God, I'm going to give him to you. Y'all kind of quiet. All of us is here today. Quiet is kept on somebody else.
I'm excited. I'm trying to get to the text, but I can't sit still when I know that God has favored you. And, and some of us are sitting here like God ain't never favored us. Sitting here like God ain't never opened up no doors. Sitting here like God ain't never done anything for us. Well, can I tell you one thing he's done for you? He woke you up this morning. Cell phone provider. 
But I'm so glad that, that if I don't pay my bill, they won't give me the chance. But thanks be to God. Every now and then when you and I, text says, he saved us for a purpose. And that's what I love about God in the text. He saved us for the purpose. Well, Jonah, what is the purpose? Number two in the text, in verses two through four, we see why God saved Jonah. So second point I want to share with you why God favored Jonah is because Jonah said, pleasant green, stick to the plan. Y'all want to see the plan? What was the plan for your life? Verse number two, here it is. He says, now go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word and went to Nineveh. Nineveh was a large city. Took three days to go through it. Jonah had begun by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming 40 more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. That was the plan and the purpose that God had for Jonah. Now the plan was simple, but it was challenging. The plan was simple, but it was difficult. The plan that he had to do, he had to tell some wicked folks, some mean folks, that judgment was coming. And I don't know about you, but that's not an easy job. When you got to tell some folks who are wicked, they're mean, they're cruel, some of the worst citizens ever, the Ninevites, they were like the baddest of the baddest. And here Jonah had to stand flat-footed and tell them, if you don't get your life right with God, judgment is coming on earth. I don't know about you, but Jonah had a tough assignment. So Jonah, that was the plan. And when Jonah told him what God's plan, Jonah had, couldn't put no gimmicks on it, couldn't put no chaser with it. He had to tell them that, look, get your life together. Otherwise, God is not pleased with your life. But Jonah had a testimony to share because, in fact, he knew something about God's wrath. But he, had, he, he was able to live to tell that we serve a merciful God. That blessed me because it's not easy, pleasant green. But God favored you and I to tell folks, thus saith the Lord. I love that because that's not just for the preacher. It's just not for the deacon. It's also for the pew. That you and I, God has a plan for our life. Our plans are not to prosper, not to build, build cathedrals. But can I tell you what our plan for our life is? We have to tell and tell those were unsaved and unchurched that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're going to tell them but God committed his love toward us in that while you and I were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What's the plan? Tell them that the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Tell them if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Jesus. And I love it because we serve a God that has a plan for everything. Y'all know about his plans? Anybody in his financial plan? Anybody taking part in the financial plan? Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Prove me now is for saith the Lord of hosts if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room to receive it. Anybody involved it's all kind of quiet. Survey time. Anybody participating in God's financial plan? Y'all, let me look this way. Anybody? Anybody believe? Y'all, let me look this way. Is there anybody that believes and can testify 
over your life. And you say, you know what? I've had some Jonah moments in my life. But I'm so grateful that God has given me another chance. And if Jonah 